Hello, I'm Alberto Roura. I'm from Spain and live in Australia, working since 2014. I'm also Alibaba Cloud MVP. Well, what is this MVP? It's a program from Alibaba Cloud. Uh, this encourages uh, professionals like me, like any of you, to really help collaborate in the community. Uh, so it's just a bit to create this community and help each other. They also give you early access usually to all the new products, which is pretty cool, because you can try everything they're trying the internally. They are testing. Sometimes it's even stuff that is still half broken, so you help, you help uh, debugging some of the stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's go with the presentation. So I'm here to talk about generating NFT images uh, using serverless. Um, this is because I'm developing a, a platform uh, to help artists in the tech space. They have no idea of what NFT crypto is, so we just help them. Um, so the, the presentation is going to be pr uh, first, um, we are going to explain a bit the pain points of working with media. Uh, working with media itself is kind of a, a monster. Uh, it's a, this big thing that no one wants to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk a bit the Web3 ecosystem, uh, a bit of a concept, because we, usually Web3 is this thing that everyone talks about, but no one um, knows exactly what it is. Um, then I'm going to explain a bit the serverless approach, uh, which Alibaba Cloud products uh, we use. And then I'm going to present a, a small demo, a bit of uh, how to deploy the, the whole thing and how, how we do it. Uh, so let's go. So pain points working with media. Um, usually this is a very resource intensive uh, thing. Uh, think about how much memory, CPU, and, and storage is, is used. It's just massive to think about it. Uh, the extreme burst, uh, this uh, one minute, you have a cluster uh, just sitting there. Uh, the next minute, uh, a company throws you thousands of images or videos to process. Uh, so this makes it really hard to predict. It makes it really expensive to plan because you can think about, yeah, uh, at 9 a.m. every morning, uh, this company sends you this uh, albums or any, any type of content, uh, you scale everything, you assign 30 GPUs, uh, you fill the cluster with resources, and then nothing happens that day. So that's a lot of resources usually wasted. Um, so it's really, it's, it's really tricky to get it done. Uh, workload diversity, um, this thing about it can be images, it can be video, uh, but also it can be from one single file to imagine um, a collection of 100 4K one hour long videos to process. It's just from processing one small PNG or JPEG to processing that much, it's just a, a universe of difference. Um, this requires high operations and maintenance. Uh, well, usually you need highly specialized personnel, which is not easy to find. And once you find them, is you really need to uh, don't let them go. Uh, if something breaks and someone is on leave or leaves your company, your business is done. So you rely a lot in this type of, um, in this type of people. Um, this type of people, why is complex? Because they need to know what to do with the clustering, networking, volumes, uh, all these concepts by, by themselves. It has a whole thing, a whole set of a skill set. Okay, so now we talk about the, um, the what uh, kind of, how it's like to work with media. Uh, let's talk about a bit of the concept of Web3. So everyone here is in the same page. Um, we have the chain, of course. Uh, a chain, blockchain is a, chain of blocks, that's obvious. Uh, usually when we refer as Web3, um, we talk about uh, chains like Ethereum, uh, Polygon, testnets like um, Guerli or Coven. Uh, I know there's other uh, chains uh, working on Web3 like Ravencoin or Solana, but usually when people is talking about Web3, the main, the main thing or the big movement is being done in Ethereum-like chains. 
uh, then you have a node, uh, of course. When you have an app, uh, your application doesn't speak directly to the blockchain. There is no such thing as a blockchain. Uh, you have a node that is connected to the network, is synchronizing all the blocks, all the transactions, is, is aware of the general state of the whole network. So, and then you, you have IPFS. So the node connects uh, to, well, to the blockchain. And then the IPFS is the uh, decentralized storage solution. Uh, IPFS, I think, means um, interplanetary file system, which is a pretty nice name, but is meant to be used, or, or it's a solution that is meant to be, or is meant to work uh, f uh, sharing files between Earth and Mars. They always say um, a Wikipedia article takes 48 minutes to load from Mars to Earth, but once someone loads the Wikipedia article in Mars, everyone will be able to, to read it if Wikipedia is still there when we go to Mars. Um, this can be self-hosted. Uh, you can be use usually an API, like service like Piñata or something like that, but it's very easy to host a, a node yourself, and it's key for NFTs. This is super important because I've seen many famous projects, uh, even from famous people, that they, uh, they, they load the assets in a Web2 like um, uh, approach, and then when they switch off the, the server, all those NFTs, they are completely worthless. All those assets, they are gone. So this is very important to use. Uh, then we have Web3 JS. This is a kind of, we are reaching the point of one connecting everything. Uh, this is a library of um, a lot of functions to connect your application to, to the node. In this case, the, the second part, uh, the, the node itself. Uh, it lets you just make payments, uh, mint the NFTs, a bit communicate with the, um, with the whole ecosystem. And then the smart contracts. This, for me, is the holy grail, the, the magic, where everything happens in the, in the Web3 ecosystem. Uh, smart contracts, I like to call them as the kind of evolution of, uh, of serverless applications, uh, because they, they run without managing a virtual machine, right? It, it runs somewhere, no one knows where it's running. Um, but they let you mint NFTs, send, receive payments, and most importantly, they are completely transparent. They are usually written in Solidity. It's a programming language for the smart contracts. And everyone can just go, check, audit, and see if they, there's something going on. So it's very important for security. OK, so now we know this. Uh, I'm going to explain how we deploy, uh, what, which products we use in Alibaba uh, to deploy our platform. Uh, of course, we use OSS, um, Object Storage Service. It's highly scalable, but we use it in two ways. One, the first one is we host the website and the tool directly on a bucket. Uh, we run a static site with JavaScript, so we use Vue.js and React. It's a combination of both that uh, we, we, we develop the tool with. Um, then we also use OSS to manage that temporary uh, storage for the collections, when someone sends you all the files, the Photoshop files, um, all the layers, and all the state, the metadata of the, of the collections. Um, we use function compute, of course. This is the, the, the core, the, the heart of a serverless ecosystem in Alibaba Cloud. This lets you run functions on demand, uh, pay per second, and you can also use your custom Docker images if the one they, pro they give you, they are not enough. Uh, to connect both, we use uh, the, uh, well, the OSS triggers. So when something happens in a bucket, um, an object gets created, deleted, you name it, it creates an event. You can create a listener of that event and then execute a function depending on that. So you can fine tune a lot what to do with it. Uh, RAM, this is a resource access manager, I think is the name. Uh, this is how we manage the user groups, the permissions, of course. Our solution is working on a static site. 
uh, this purely front end is in the browser. We don't host any database as we try to do, to make it as decentralized as possible. Um, so the user directly uploads all the metadata and all the information to the bucket directly. Um, so we try to, to make it as safe as possible so they don't delete other people's stuff. So you don't want that. And serverless devs. This is an um, open source uh, framework. It's to deploy everything. So it's very, if some of you uh, use Terraform, it's kind of the Terraform for serverless. This is my favorite. Uh, Alibaba, I think, is involved heavily in the development. It works with many cloud providers, but it especially works very good with Alibaba Cloud. So you have a config file in YAML. Uh, you put your function, and then it, it just deals with the whole deploy and build um, steps. So now let's go to the solution. I'm going to show you a bit of a, a how to deploy the whole thing and a bit of a demo. So. Uh, an artist, as I mentioned, we usually do this for artists that they don't, well, they have no idea of technology, so they, they know how to do things in Photoshop. So they upload the Photoshop file to the tool, which is hosted in an OSS bucket, and this is what it is. It basically plays with the layers, it checks the rarities, all these things that needs to happen in an NFT, plays that everything works, and assigns how many, how many NFTs they want to do. In the meanwhile, uh, there is a lot of drafts being uploaded. Uh, so this keeps going on uh, back and forth, back and forth to the OSS bucket. Uh, so some functions, they keep running for analytics purposes. Next step, uh, so yeah, the NFT's metadata goes to the OSS buckets. The OSS triggers the, the object created, which is for me the most important one. When an object gets created, we, throw, uh, we, we run a Python script, which this is the, where all the magic happens, and generates an NFT. Uh, we use pandas and basically make sure that all the rarities are set, there is no duplicates, there is enough level of randomness, because that's also magic for the NFT community. A zip file gets generated, so when everything runs, you can, you have two things. One, upload the, the, the resulting images to IPFS, as I mentioned before, and directly mint the NFTs, so it's ready to sell and share with the community. Or you can just download the, the seed file. You can just get the, the result, get it to your hard drive, and enjoy it. How we deploy it? We use serverless devs, 100% open source, uh, this is an example of a, uh, a config file. You can see we can have uh, the services, the function itself, and some triggers. This is how we fine tune. As you can see in the bottom, you have prefix and suffix. So everything uploaded that starts with that, uh, with that uh, characters and ends with that one, There's the prefix and suffix, it will trigger a specific function, which is well, in that bucket, it will run uh, directly, uh, well, it will run that function because the trigger's definition is under the function. Uh, the next step is once you define the config file, you just uh, run s build, which uh, builds a, a Docker image for you. As you can see, if you are familiar with Docker, this is up, uh, it's getting all the image, it's building uh, getting all the dependencies for you. Of course, this is uh, speed up. It, didn't, it doesn't work that fast, depending on the network. Uh, when you have the, once you have the Docker image uh, done, that means you have everything ready. So you can just go as deploy. This gets all the triggers, checks the, the OSS bucket exists, and gets all the image and uploads to Alibaba Cloud. Once everything is done, you have a nice message like that one, and everything is done. So now is the moment. Now you have the site uh, deployed to a bucket. Um, you have the backend running in function compute. You have the OSS bucket. You have everything ready. So right now, the only thing to do is for the final user to go, pay for the collection, in this case $12, 
in this moment, function compute is running, is generating all this collection. So whenever it's ready, uh, it's ready to just download. You check the file, open all the images, and everything is there for you to use. So this is it. Thank you, for, so, thank you so much for coming, and thank you. Thank you, Alberto.